good afternoon. Um, welcome to St. Oliver's to our outside mass, our second one. Um, we want to extend a, well, a warm welcome to you all on this 26th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Those joining us here in the church and those watching from home, for those not attending Mass and Church, we offer distribution of the Eucharist each Sunday from 1215 to 1230 at the back parking lot entrance. You may remain in your car. You can register to become a parishioner online at our website under the Welcome to Our Parish tab. Please be sure to make your online reservations. We are encouraged that there are now more people attending Mass and Church and we need to keep both the accurate record and contact tracing. And to be sure, we, do, we don't exceed the safety recommendation of numbers for the people in the church. The Men's Club Annual Golf Classic will be held at Monroe Golf Club, at Monroe Golf and Country Club on Monday, October 5th. Complete information is in the bulletin on our website. You can become a ghost player this year with a $100 do donation towards the great work done by our men's club. Members of our St. Vincent de Paul will be accepting donations for their outreach work in our community after all masses this weekend. And another outdoor mass is scheduled for this weekend. That's where we're at right now. Please bring your lawn chairs. I hope you all have them. <laughs> and then this Friday, October 2nd is the first Friday Beginning this Friday and continuing each first Friday, we are, are going to offer adoration of the Blessed Sacrament in the church from 9.30 to noon. Please join us and don't forget your Mass. All right, well, welcome to St. Oliver's once again. For all of us here who are ready to celebrate, we invite you to please stand at this time. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. His holy name. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With you. Dear brothers and sisters, as we gather together to celebrate this mystery of God's love, let us pause for a moment asking pardon and forgiveness for all our failures, and prepare ourselves worthy to celebrate these mysteries. God, how mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth. manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say, the Lord way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit inequities, and dies, it is because of the iniquities he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness that he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sin that, has, that he has committed, he shall surely live he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
reading from the letter of Paul, St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interest, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, through, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory 
Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I said to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. It is always tempting for us to think of saints as superhuman. And certainly many of them show phenomenal courage and commitment to the faith. But their stories also remind us whether or not a saint is superhuman, he or she is also human. Jesus understood that and it is one of the points in this Sunday's Gospel. He told the story of two sons, one obedient, one disobedient, and made clear that sometimes the person who appears to be the holiest or who seems to say the right thing isn't necessarily the one doing God's will. Tax collectors and prostitutes, he said to the chief priests, are entering the kingdom of God before you. This was a shocking thought at that time, but one that should be familiar to all of us today. The story of our church, after all, is a story of transformation, of change. It is a story of salvation and redemption, of changing course and beginning again. It is a story of people starting over. It is being said that the church isn't a museum for stained glass sta uh, saints, but a hospital for sinners. Well, we are all patients in that particular hospital. Some of us are in intensive care. But a lot of remarkable people have been here before us. And there is you and me. No matter how we have sinned or what choices we have made, God holds out this beautiful possibility. No matter what we have done, we can still be saints. Like the sun in the parable, we can change our minds. We can change our direction. You can change your mind and change your heart. It is clearly a theme that Jesus wanted to drive home again and again to his listeners. It is one that has echoed down through history as the Christian faith, faith has been passed on. The notion that there is another way, there is another choice, a better way, 
the father's way the father's will he is calling are we listening the fact is he has something in mind for each of us it may not be always easy but if we listen to what god is trying to tell us follow the direction he is trying to take us and trust in his will for our lives we may be amazed at where he leads us about 30 years ago a young man named peter day was embarking on a career as sports writer in australia sports he once said was my religion he didn't pay much attention to his faith i heard your standard boring catholic upbringing he said and usually went to mass just at christmas and easter one sunday with nothing else to do he wandered into a church he found a seat near the back mass was underway but it was unlike any he had ever experienced before it was a mass for the homeless all the people around him had no place to live no place to call home i remember sitting there among all these poor homeless people he said and the gospel just came alive for me that moment was transformative he knew he couldn't keep doing what he had been doing he could find another religion besides sports a year later he entered the seminary during his formation he asked the archbishop for a special assignment he wanted to live and work among the homeless the archbishop agreed for eight months peter they lived at the bottom of a stairwell with nothing but a mattress he showered in a public toilet he lived among the lonely the fearful the depressed the mentally ill when he was ordained a deacon the ordination took place where he often volunteered at a Matt Talbot Center for Recovering Alcoholics. A few months later, he was ordained a priest. Today, Father Peter Day runs a charity for the homeless in Australia. A guy who once seemed destined to have everything now wanted to serve those who have nothing. He has never felt more fulfilled. This is why I was ordained, he says today, to walk alongside those who are most vulnerable. It is far cry for what he was doing 30 years ago. But at a critical moment in his life, like the son in the gospel, Peter Day changed his mind. Now working with the homeless, he is himself an agent of change, changing lives, changing circumstances, changing minds. Are we open to change ourselves? Are we open to changing ourselves? Are we open to God's work in our lives, his will for us? This gospel today is nothing less than a call to change, a call to conversion. It asks us to reconsider the choices we have made. It asks us to remember, as Peter Day did, what matters and where it began. If we haven't taken our faith seriously, take another look. If we have thought, I go to Mass a couple of times a year, that is enough. Or if we think, I watch Mass on TV or Internet, 
think again. If you have said no to God, pray for the wisdom to change that choice and ask for the courage to say yes. God is summoning us, calling us, challenging us, just like the father we did with the two children. He is asking us to do his labor in the vineyard, to do his work in the world. What is our answer? It's worth remembering in the parable that we heard, the son who ultimately does the father's will and presumably is finally saved is in the son who said yes. It is the one who at first said no. He changed his mind and changed his heart. And that made all the difference. God gives us that chance again and again. The chance to take another road. Many of the greatest saints were like us, but took the chance God gave them. And we have it within us to be like them. No matter how many times we may have said no to the will of God, by His grace, he, we still have a chance to say yes and make that change in our lives. Amen. Let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Presenting all our needs, let us seek the love and mercy of God. Our response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that the Holy Spirit may bind us with the same love, uniting us in heart so that we may carry out God, God's will in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may have the courage to do what is right and just, even when it is not easy or popular. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For missionaries who spread the good news through the world and through word and action that they may be kept safe from harm, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For men and women preparing for priesthood or religious life, may they feel the Holy Spirit uniting them together in heart and mind with the love of God and the love of neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our Jewish brothers and sisters as they observe Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, the holiest day of the year. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may humbly regard others as more important than ourselves, looking out for their interest and becoming the face of Christ for our neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For for the healing of those listed in the book of prayer, for the sick and all those suffering from the pandemic virus, may God in his infinite mercy heal them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, all those listed in our book of the deceased and those who have lost their lives as a result of this pandemic virus, May, the, may they experience eternal peace in the kingdom of God, and especially for the intention, uh, Joyce Marit Marinich, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Offering all our intentions and seeking the intercession of our Blessed Mother, we pray together. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst, amongst women. women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of His name, for I believe in the fathers of the Church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world 
that in your mercy you send us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the found of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread And drink this cup We proclaim your death the Lord Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate The memorial of his death and resurrection We offer you, Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, Joel and Ned, his auxiliaries, all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Oliver and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be quiet to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. For the communion, please stay where you are. You know, the, uh, we will bring the communion to you. Okay.
the name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Jesus, you put him in My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be quiet in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united, whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with you. and may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, happy birthdays and happy anniversaries to everyone. We're going to the car. Okay. <laughs> Yeah.
Yes, I am. 